The funny cars about set to roar into your living room as we welcome you back to the strip. And there is a man who is hoping to be able to pull off a tombstone pile driver against his opponent, Jim Epler. Facing Dean Scusa. Even trying to outdo Dean in the drags in the uh, in the burnout area. And of course, uh, we all know that uh, Scusa is the uh, king of the burnouts. Meanwhile, Steve Evans has caught up with Kenny Bernstein at the far end. Well, Kenny Bernstein, you left on Selzy. <laughs> you beat him to the finish line, and you've got lane choice. That's that's the hat trick. Yeah, you couldn't ask for more than that. That's a great team over there, the Winston and those guys. And when the Bud Keem race them, you have to be ready. And our team did a great job. I want to say uh, something for Robert Goodwin, our buddy. Hope he pulls through all this. And I ran it so far past the finish line, I think I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> He's loving that new Brad Hadman car. Brand new here at the Strip. As Steve said earlier, he hadn't even sat in that machine until they cranked it up here this weekend. This is going to be the 12th time that Jim Epler and Dean Scusa have gone head to head. Epler has the edge, six wins to five for the Matco team. Well, Epler's part of that Tolliver team, of course, this year, and they, they've got Dale Armstrong on board as a crew chief of Tolliver, and I, I know they've got uh, a lot of talent over there on the Epler side, too, but that, that unity of, of all that talent base over there, the two car team, is really, really starting to uh, prove itself this season. And I think that not only Tolliver, but I think you're going to see Epler have some pretty good drag races and start to move up significantly in that point standings. I didn't know you were as big of a wrestling fan as, as you were telling me before. Oh, huge, huge. Yeah. Especially folks when he fan. showed up in spandex and a Speedo. I said, <laughs> I've seen enough. <laughs> Epler and Scusa. <laughs> Epler pulling away and throws his opponent into the turnbuckle. Jim Epler is going to the finals with a five-second run at 302 miles an hour. That five-second flat on an afternoon like this is uh, going to serve notice that he's ready to go to into the final round. They've got a great, great uh, program put there together. And, and a good drag race. Both the cars ran over 300 miles an hour. You can see in this shot here what it's like to drive one of these Nitro Funny cars. A lot of steering wheel action to keep that car in the center of your lane. After losing in the opening round at Gainesville, Jim Epler's in the finals here in Las Vegas. Against whom? Now well, that's going to be the question that has to be answered upcoming here in just seconds. It will be either that man who has his sights set on the finals, Tony Pedragon, or Tim Wilkerson who will be across the lane from him. Meanwhile, the far end, Steve Evans standing by with Jim Epler off that great run. The snack bar and rub mustard in his eyes. My favorite wrestling move. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, whatever it takes. How about that Las Vegas odds makers, 25 to 1. Never underestimate WWF. Into the final round. Now we got to carry the torch, but uh, hey, the big good news is moving up in the points, and uh, Kane will be proud, I'm sure. <laughs> and our good buddy Bob probably put 50 bucks down on that, he's like. Of course, of course, Kane eats sandwiches bigger than Bob Fry, so uh, you know, uh, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Bob will be very proud as well. Tony Pedragon. You know, he made an offhand comment there, Epler did, but some of the race and sports books out here at the uh, hotels and casinos carrying this event on the big board here this weekend. That's exciting. I don't yeah. know. I didn't get in on any of that action. No, I didn't either. I was just looking for medicinal purposes. <laughs> <laughs> Burnout for the Kenworth team and Tim Wilkerson. This track has held up pretty well today in 90 degree temperatures. Tony Pedragon was talked to earlier in the day about how the strip at Las Vegas is coming along. They really built it right. And um, again, once it is conditioned with a lot of rubber, I, I do believe it's going to be one of the best on the circuit, even with the warmer conditions that we have. Um, the, the cars are, are going just fine to about a thousand feet. Then you're having to drive it a little bit because they start slipping the tire. And again, that's just because it doesn't have a lot of rubber out there. A man with eight career funny car wins against Tim Wilkerson, who won at Chicago a year ago. Now, Wilkerson, just moments ago, actually got to the starting line late. Uh, they roared up here. They were hurrying around the car. Uh, they obviously had a few problems making that call. Uh, we're going to have to find out if that's going to affect the car's performance. You've got a buddy works for that team, don't you? Yeah, a friend of mine named Fred Mandolini uh, spent a lot of years racing alcohol, actually helped me with one of the Miller Top Fuel cars a few years ago. Finals, Pedro.
Patrick on Tillman, and though he hazes it down the end, he'll hang on for the win at a 499, 301 miles an hour to a 509 for Tim Wilkerson. And this was almost predicted, I think, uh, on his last round of competition. I talked about him pulling in a little bit deep into the staging lights, right. which helps your reaction time, hurts your ET. But the last one would have calculated out without the deep stage as a high 490 run. And he stayed shallow this time and came up with a 499. Uh, they're going to be uh, they're going to be tough to beat in the final. Well, Pedricon had already gone to the finals earlier this year at Pomona and lost there to Jerry Tolliver. Now he's in the finals in Las Vegas, facing Tolliver's teammate Jim Epler as we continue from the strip. Back with you here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, our first look in our telecast today of the Pro Stocks. Let's see how they're doing. Hey, it's been an all jag all the time kind of season. Winning at Pomona and Phoenix, Frank, he's been tough. Well, they have the Coughlin and family's been tough in drag racing over the years with Dad Jakes being a drag racer a number of years ago in all sorts of categories, but Pro Stock is where they've really started to make the reputation. Now we're set for semifinal action. Let's see how these guys have gotten to where they are thus far today. You'll see who pulled off the win. A big win there for Troy Coughlin over the number one qualifier, Ron Krischer, who had been strong throughout the weekend. Warren Johnson knocking off his son and then knocking off the guy to whom he provides engines, Richie Stevens. Yeah, and we talked about it earlier, how, what would Warren do? Sell an engine that's better than his engine to somebody yeah. else? And generally they don't. They keep the fastest ones for themselves. That is Jake Coughlin. You're looking at him right there. Known for his great reaction times. And as we said, he already won this year at Pomona. He won at Phoenix and really has been very, very strong. We've got an onboard listen to the Jags team. Now for me. See exactly what if anything they are saying one to the next. The driver has to have a lot of concentration as opposed to the starting line. So quite often when they get talking on the radios as they approach the starting line, the banter will stop. Getting set to go against the Cowboy, Mark Pollock out of Akron, Ohio. Sponsored by Summit Racing. Action time to Powick. The battle is a good one. The power to Jag, and he's going to another final. Jag Coughlin at 707, 195 miles an hour. A little bit of saving grace here for Mark Powick. Although we lost the round of competition, Mark's been struggling over the last year or so with his reaction times, and he had a great one there and left three hundredths of a second early. So we've got one of our finalists in pro stock. We've got them both already set in funny car. Steve is standing by at the far end with Tony Pedragon. Tony Pedragon, I have been authorized to give you Lane Joyce at 499. Well, that's uh, pretty close. I don't know that it really matters a lot. Uh, the other guys seem to be getting down that other lane, but really a tune-up's coming in right, right in the nick of time. Really want to try to pull this off for Syntec and Ford and MacTool. Auto value, they've really been standing behind us, and, and uh, Medlin, of course, and really like to win it for Force, but these guys are doing a, a tremendous job, and it'd be nice to win it. And Force wants that WWF. You know that. <laughs> that is indeed the case. That has been a, a little sore spot all year for John Force, uh, now trailing in points uh, to the WWF team. Now can Troy Coughlin win here, knocking off Warren Johnson and uh, join his brother in the finals? Well, Warren's got to feel like this Coughlin family uh, uh, is really starting to gang up on him. And Dick Maskin is the crew chief uh, for the Coughlins and starting to build that power. And it, it appears that he's an equal of Warren Johnson when it comes to uh, making pro stock engine power. One of the most remarkable stories, I think, that Warren Johnson has won a race and finished in the top five in points for 19 years in a row. Remarkable. Johnson on the left, Johnson on the right. Reaction time to WJ. The power is for WJ. It'll be Johnson and Jag in the finals. 707 at 195 miles an hour. 707s on both sides of the racetrack. One of the really exciting things about Pro Stock competition is how close the racing is, often within a few thousandths of a second of one another. And it's interesting, they always say that Warren, not the best reaction time man, and here he beats the much younger Troy Coughlin when the light turns green. So the matchup is a good one. Warren Johnson, Jake Coughlin, 
when we come back we've got more coming your way don't leave us now it's just now getting good we continue from las vegas after this